Looking for a fast and easy way to set up some continuous integration and deployment? Well, look no further than GitHub Actions, which is here to save the day in Visual Studio. So come on down and learn more on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today we're gonna be talking about GitHub Actions. And joining me today to talk all about them is uh, Senior Program Manager, Angelos Petropoulos. Welcome, Angelos. Hello, good to be here. Nice to have you. So uh, can you tell me more about yourself and what exactly GitHub Actions even are? Is that related to the GitHub version control things that I use on a regular basis in Visual Studio? Kind of does, yeah, it is. So um, I'm a PM for .NET. Uh, the last few years I've been working on tooling for web projects in Visual Studio. So I look after features like Publish. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is, like you said, GitHub Actions. Um, you might uh, tell from the name, uh, it gives it away. It's a GitHub only feature right now. But the idea is that uh, you can do CICD through um, a workflow defined in GitHub. If your project is hosted on GitHub, Visual Studio can help you set it up through right click Publish, which I'm going to show you today. Cool. So um, for people who don't know, what is CI CD? Yeah, so if you have a piece of code and you have an application that you want to deploy somewhere, um, one way to do it is you can right click on your project in Visual Studio, publish it. Uh, Visual Studio helps you build it, takes everything that you have on your local machine, uh, configures it correctly, and puts it on your deployment target, which is great and very convenient. And uh, we have a whole bunch of users doing that, about uh, three, 400,000 a month, actually. Totally. Um, the alternative. Yeah, uh, the alternative is um, if you want your uh, deployment to happen from source control, so instead of deploying what's exactly on your local machine, uh, but you want something that goes out of source control, something that maybe has already run some tests, maybe as part of it building, it does some other checks. That's what we call continuous uh, integration, uh, continuous deployment. You can do one without the other. So you could just do continuous integration and just build your project every time you check in, make sure your tests pass. And when you're ready, you can tack onto it CD, the continuous deployment. So after your tests pass, you can also automatically deploy it to your server. So as you're checking in code and going about your development, your production environment or your testing environment is always up to date uh, without you having explicitly to do the publish every time. Awesome. And that's where GitHub Actions can come in, right? And make that CI, CD or continuous integration, continuous deployment experience better, right? Exactly. That's the um, the option that you have with uh, when your code is um, uh, source controlled in GitHub, uh, but it also supports other things. Uh, you can have your source control in other places as well. But what we're going to show today is that simple scenario. Your code is on GitHub, you're using Visual Studio, and we make it really easy for you to be able to just configure CICD for your project in just a few seconds, as you're going to see, a few minutes, let's say. Cool. Well, we like easy on this show, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'd love to see how it works. All right, so what I got here is um, the latest preview of Visual Studio. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's 16.10. But the feature that I'm going to show you exists ever since 16.8 preview 3. Um, you just have to make sure for all the builds that it's enabled under tools options. It's called GitHub Action Support for Publish. Um, so what I have here is just the latest preview. Uh, I spared you having to watch me do a file new project, ASP.NET Core. That's all I've done here. Um, and the other thing I've done is I've gone ahead and pushed it to GitHub. So you can see that Solution Explorer tells me that this project is source controlled. Um, so like I said, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to right click and ask to publish this project. Now, it's the first time I'm doing it for this project. So I'm being asked where would I like to publish today. And um, in publish, I'm proud to say we support many destinations. Um, what I'm about to show you uh, will eventually work for most of the destinations that Publish supports, which just right now in preview, we don't have support for, let's say, an on-prem FTP server, and we don't have support for GitHub Actions when you publish into a folder, but we do have support for GitHub Actions when you publish into Azure. So I'll, I'll show you that. I'll pick Azure as my target. Um, on the next screen, um, Visual Studio is aware of the type of project that I'm publishing. It's ASP.NET, and it knows what targets in Azure are applicable for this project type. Shows me the list. Let's say I want to deploy this to Azure Web Service on Linux. That's a target we support GitHub Actions for. Click Next. Now here, Visual Studio is helping me pick the instance I want to deploy to. 
So it's going through the last subscription I used and it's showing me all the instances that already exist. Um, I can always click the plus button and provision a new instance if that's what I wish to do. Just gonna save myself some time and pick an existing instance that I've created before. So now that I click next, um, this is the, the, first, the first change that you're gonna see by having this preview feature in your build. Um, Visual Studio is smart enough to know that the options I've picked um, can be fulfilled either by using just the normal publish. I built everything in VS, click the publish button, I deploy. Um, or I have the option of doing CI CD. That's why we present you this screen. The first option is what you're aware of, what you are always used to. Right click publish, generates a pub XML file or a published profile, as we like to call it. There's a big publish button, you click it and it does a deployment. Or you can see this new option, uh, which is doing CI CD through GitHub Actions. So clicking finish here, Visual Studio is going to create a working workflow um, that is applicable to my project. So I'll go ahead and do that. So what's happening here is Visual Studio knows exactly how to make this project work in the address I have picked. So now Visual Studio knows exactly the type of project uh, that I have open and the target that I picked in Azure. So it's downloading the best template, the best GitHub action workflow file it can find to make sure that with virtually no touch, um, I can get my application deployed to Azure through CI CD. So I'm gonna take you through the top of the screen, working downwards. Um, at the top of the page, I have a new workflow file created. It's named after my project.yaml. Uh, it's telling me it's being deployed to Azure App Service on Linux. And on the right-hand side, it's reminding me that this is using CI CD, uh, GitHub Actions. This is typically where the big publish button is. So is the end game to be able to have multiple options for CI CD in addition to GitHub Actions? We are definitely considering support for Azure DevOps. And we're looking really closely to the ability to, if you have one, convert to the other. We know we have a whole bunch of customers who have Azure DevOps pipelines that they're playing around with GitHub Actions. Mm -hmm. So we're considering giving them a little converter. That's cool. Um, um, but we would love to hear from people if they need support for something specifically or a conversion for something specifically, we would love to know. It helps build our case for it. Cool. Um, so we, we've created the, the workflow. Um, uh, I have my status here of what's happening right now and what I need to do next. Um, so it's telling me that the workflow um, will not run until I commit and push the workflow and the changes to my GitHub repo. Uh, so this is a little bit different than publish. Uh, because now we're using CI CD, it's going to happen on the trigger that Visual Studio has picked, which in the section below, it's telling you it's on push. So every time we push a change to the repo, this workflow will run. So let me click commit and push, let you run in the background, and I'll walk you through the rest of the screen. So the uh, workflow is being provisioned, which means that Visual Studio is making uh, all the necessary connections between Azure, the repo, uh, downloading any secrets, putting in the right place, making sure the workflow actually exists on the repo, and then it's gonna start monitoring for its execution. Uh, and actually, it was fast enough to start monitoring immediately, and it's telling me it's running. Awesome. The reason it's running, yeah, it's, I, I love this. I just click a button and I just right? do nothing. Let the magic uh, happen. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and while this is happening, it's, it's the perfect uh, segue for me to explain why it's executing. Uh, it's executing because the most common trigger is on push. Another trigger is on a PR, maybe on a merge. Um, we just, in Visual Studio, we start with the simplest one. Um, mm -hmm. The section below, it's giving you a little summary of how the current workflow is configured. Um, it's also telling you that it required a published secret. So because the CI CD is gonna take our application and put it in Azure, um, the CI CD operation, the execution of the build and deployment is happening on GitHub. Now GitHub needs to have access to the instance. So we need to give it somehow access to the credentials. And we don't want any of that to be anywhere near source code or anywhere where it can accidentally leak. So the best way to do that is to configure it through a GitHub secret on the GitHub repo itself. And Visual Studio has done that, and it's telling you that the secret has been found in the repository. So it did all that work for me. I didn't have to like manually create the secret. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So here's what it did. It basically went to the instance in Azure and said, what are the credentials that I need? And it downloaded the publish profile. It then went to the GitHub repo. It created a secret with the name that you're seeing here. It put the contents of that, the published credentials encrypted into the secret. 
And then in the YAML file, in the workflow itself, it has told it to go and create uh, uh, the deployment action and use this published profile when it's doing the deployment. So all of that was done for me. Awesome. Um, now, if I want to, I can click Edit Workflow. This will drop us into the uh, YAML editing experience in Visual Studio. This is literally the template that Visual Studio downloaded uh, based on my selections in the wizard. And it's the one that when I clicked commit and push was sent to the repo and was executing. I can make changes here. Um, we will in Visual Studio respect the changes. I know that people often worry if something is automatically generated. If I mess with it, will it just uh, jump over my changes later? That is not the case. We are generating this file, but that's because you told us through the wizard that you want to do a new deployment. From that point onwards, we will respect any changes you make to the file. And in fact, we expect you to kind of build it up over time. Um, so don't feel feel safe and, and uh, uh, that this is actually reliable and it's not going to lose any changes you may not do that maybe we don't yet expose through the summary screen. Um, we do have plans to give you some rich UI controls to be able to change some of the settings without leaving the screen. But right now, if you wanted to change the SDK version of the configuration, we drop you to the YAML file kind of to reinforce that, yeah, you can absolutely make changes here, and that's absolutely fine. And then finally, we have our hosting section. Uh, this is just giving me information about the instance in Azure I picked to deploy to. It's giving me things like the resource group and the resource name subscription GUID and a link to the site. Now I'm going to go back to the top. That was pretty quick. My workflow was running in the background as I was explaining all this. It tells me it completed successfully. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm curious, I can download the workflow logs and view them inside of Visual Studio. Uh, if not, I can go open in GitHub, uh, go and check out the execution on the GitHub side. So this was a deep link into my repo and also a deep link into the Actions tab. And I only have one action currently uh, for this repo because I've only done this once, build and deploy. I can click on it and it will give me the detailed log of what was happening while Visual Studio was telling me it was executing. Awesome. So if we were on this uh, site while the workflow is being, uh, what's the word, prioritized or uh, mm -hmm. created, yeah, then we would have been able to see all the checks get checked off one by one. Right? Yeah, it was actually pretty quick. Usually when I give this demo, I have enough time to come back here and see some of them. <laughs> Uh, this was super quick, both in VS and here. Um, I guess it would be cool if we just expand one of the steps. Um, so this is the deploy to Azure web app step. Uh, we can get a bit of a description of what it did and even has a handy link to the uh, app service URL we deployed to. So let's click on it and, and see, see hey. what happens. All right. Yeah. So good. this was my application deployed to Azure using CI CD. And all I did was right click publish, answer some questions, and then said, OK, thank you very much. Awesome. Simple as that. Simple as that. So it goes without telling now that every time I go and I make a change, if I go to startup.cs and I make a change, and the next time I push, uh, the exact same thing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. The workflow will run. And if I go back and refresh my page, I should be able to see my pages and my changes mm -hmm. without having to constantly right-click publish. Right. <laughs> what a time saver. Exactly. Yeah, that's really great. So um, moving forward, what's next for GitHub Actions? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, let me go back to the summary screen. Um, so the plan for GitHub Actions is to help you configure more settings to the summary page without having to drop into the YAML, support more project types. As we move forward, we want to support pretty much everything in .NET, uh, support more uh, deployment targets. So I said that we don't support IIS or FTP, some other things right now. We want to add more support for that. And we're seriously looking into a conversion from Azure DevOps workflow uh, pipelines to GitHub Actions workflows. Um, would love to hear more from customers if they're really interested in that. Uh, so we're really early stages there. Great. Yeah, so if people do want to share their feedback, uh, where can they go? Um, best place is developer community, because that way we can aggregate things. We can answer questions publicly, and we can have a dialogue. Uh, you can always tweet at me or email me at angelpe at microsoft.com. I'd love to just have a personal conversation like that as well. Good stuff. Well, thank you for sharing all that. I think that is a really fast and easy way to set up some good CI/CD 
which a lot of teams are are doing these days. So that's really cool. So thanks for being here. And I'm looking forward to see where we go from here with GitHub Actions and beyond. So um, until next time, happy coding, y'all. Thank you.